What is going on guys, Verktvoden here, and I am back for a very, very short video. So what I'm going to be going over today is this game, Divinity Original Sin 2. Now, you probably heard about this game. It's not exactly a new game. Um, it is one that I bought probably a couple years ago on a Steam sale, really deep discount. It has many amazing reviews pretty much across the board in terms of critics and users. And a couple of weeks ago, I decided to try it. And it is something that I'm not usually into anymore, which is turn-based RPG gameplay, just because, you know, I'm 45 years old. That's what I grew up on. It was really our only option. It was either Dragon Warrior and Final Fantasy or Zelda. And that was pretty much it. And, you know, Final Fantasy and games like that kind of dominated the market for almost 20 years of my life that... As games like Fable became more prominent, more real world action, that's what I've really leaned into. And it's been very difficult for me to try to go back to any sort of turn based game. So when I decided to finally try out Divinity uh, Original Sin 2, my hopes and expectations weren't very high. And almost immediately, there were a couple things about the game that frustrated me to the point of rage quitting. And I kind of thought that, you know what, this isn't going to work for me. And the biggest thing is the camera. So I, you know, huge Diablo fan. I, you know, I love top down uh, RPGs in general, but I need the control of the camera. I need to pull back and to see the battlefield. And especially for a game like Divinity Original Sin 2, the battlefield and the angles to be able to see where the enemies are and to see where loot is hidden or, you know, characters are hiding is so imperative. It really confused me as to why the developers only allowed you to pull the camera back so far. And even with a controller, like, here's the thing. I started off with mouse and keyboard because I was trying to be, you know, play it in its most true state in the developer's eyes. I didn't like it. The camera felt just awful. And so I read on a, like a subreddit or something that if, you know, using the controller, when they ported it over, it works much better and it does. But the problem is you still have that limitation. Now, when I play a game, I play it pretty heavily modded. If you've ever, you know, watch other videos on my channels, I, I don't play games vanilla anymore and you know divinity 2 is <laughs> no exception as you can see here but if this gives you any sort of indication of how good these mods are and how good this game is the main area that you start off in is called fort joy i have left fort joy only twice once last week and i immediately started the game over and again last night and that's it and if you look here, you can see I have 95 hours in this game and I've only left the tutorial zone twice. That is how fucking good this game is. And it continues to surprise me. Now there's a couple elements. I'm going to make a separate video about this, but the two biggest elements to this game is going to be number one, fixing the camera. And you can only do this on PC, unfortunately, but it is very easy to do. So I like to use Vortex or I like to use uh, direct manual downloads for mods. I don't like using a mod organizer like Mod Organizer 2 or Unity Engine or whatever, where it's this like constant multi-step process in order to get the game. I just want to download the mod. I want to know if it's compatible or not, you know, and then forget about it. I don't want to have to start anything up. I don't want to, have to start off a cleaner and do all this other crap with it. Um, I, you know, I did that with, uh, oh crap, I can't remember the name. Um, that Metal Gear Solid game, the last one. And even that, it, it's not even that big of a deal, but it's just one of those things that when I get, when I sit down to play, I don't want to have to fire up two things. And so I was really, really resistant about getting a third-party camera mod to work. 
And there was a couple of them that said they were Vortex compatible. They were not. So I'm going to show you real quick how easy this is. So this is uh, a camera mod called Improved Camera. It is technically, I have a Divinity 2 uh, Definitive Edition. This is for the non-Definitive Edition, but it does work. And all you do is quite literally, and you can see it here, Improved Camera, right? You basically, um, you know, create a new file folder, right? I just have it on my desktop. You download it all. I, I have it right here on my taskbar. All I do is boot up the game. And then this is going to just automatically do it. It's just got to load it up. You just wait till it says, okay. And that's it. That's literally it. It's just an executable. It's amazing. But it, this mod alone saved the game for me. The experience like i couldn't play the game without this mod and whoever made it i just i cannot thank you enough uh so right now in the game this is the furthest back that vanilla camera will take you and as you can see you can rotate it uh hold on. rotate back and forth yada yada you can zoom in on your characters you can zoom out but that's pretty much it right this is very, very frustrating to me. And with this mod, I can now pull all the way back. Now, my belief is that there, when you do this, there are gonna be a lot of pieces in the area, especially in dungeons, where you're gonna see the edges into nothingness. You're gonna see light sources that don't actually have a source. And I can see from a developer side that that can kind of pull you out of the game or whatever, it doesn't for me. It doesn't ruin the experience at all in any way. What ruins the experience is not being able to pull out an extra 20 feet to see an enemy that's over here or a box that's over here and have to download a mod that shows me where everything is and then try and hope that I can maneuver the camera enough to click it properly. So the improved camera works so well and I cannot suggest it enough. Uh, another mod that I will talk about in another video, which I'm actually going to do kind of uh, a little GoFundMe for because this mod author really honestly should be a developer, um, but it's called the Odin Blade Mods. No relation whatsoever. Just an absolutely amazing game altogether. And I just wanted to make this quick video because I have not put anything out. You know, I, I was on a pretty good rhythm between like getting gaming content and shit posting on political bullshit. And this game has just become everything. Like I am, I'm playing this during like class lectures that I'm supposed to be listening to. As soon as I come home from work, I am like, ah, I could do the garbage tomorrow morning right before I go to work at 5 a.m. Because I, it's going to take away from my gaming time. This game is so well written, is so, so good on so many levels that so few games hit nowadays that justify a full like 50 or $60 price tag. Now, again, this is an older game. Like I said, I think I maybe got it for like 20 bucks on some Steam sale. I'm pretty sure as the holidays are coming up, it's going to be on a deep discount again. And sooner or later, hopefully before then, I will have a better video kind of detailing over the justification of the mods and kind of highlight them and the Odin Blade ones in particular. But no guarantees because again, I've almost got 100 hours into this game and I've only left the tutorial area twice. Um, I don't know that I have ever been that obsessed with a game so far. I mean, not even Skyrim because Skyrim being open world, you just kind of want to go, you know, and like fall out. You just want to go and see everything as soon as possible. We're here. You really want to learn the mechanics. I want to learn the characters. I want to learn about the world. I'm not just popping through every book in the game and going, okay, like, uh, nope, that's crafting materials. Oh, crap. I just downloaded this other mod. I haven't used it yet. Oh, I'm not going to have it. I don't even know where the books are, but there's like all these books that you can kind of read and it gives like lore and kind of gives you some, you know, tidbits on what to do next and all this sort of thing. And 
it's one of those things that you don't actually want to speed through you the story the world crafting and the storytelling is so good you really do want to dive deep into not only the companions that you have but the history of the world and the wonderful thing about it is that I didn't play Divinity 1. If you haven't played Divinity 1, it is not necessary to play Divinity 2. The story writing is so, so good. And it's crafted in a way where it doesn't feel... I can't think of the right word. You know, in Fallout, you would go to like terminals to kind of learn about the world. And after like a few terminals, you're like, all right, fine. Just open the goddamn door. I'll read this later. or I'll read about it on a wikia. It's through conversations that you have with NPC characters and they don't skip out on it. Like all the characters are voiced. The ones that you talk to are fairly conversational. The conversational choices are really deep, kind of like uh, old school oblivion. Uh, dialogue choices, depending on your character, depending on your attributes or your traits or the tags or whatever. It's, it's just so well done. And so I just wanted to make this quick video to let you guys know that I didn't stop making videos all of a sudden. Like I didn't just give up after a few weeks. It's just that this game is just everything. So um, I hope that is a glowing enough endorsement to get you to pique your interest again. Like, you know, Times are a little tough right now. So if you don't have the 50 bucks to buy the definitive edition on Steam or Xbox, just, you know, wait till Christmas or the New Year's. It'll probably be a deep discount. Anyway, I got to go. I got to play this some more.